This video is brought to you by Arun Meta. Thank you so much for donating. If you want to support Brekkies yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash Brekkies. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in the Patreon-funded Game Math Theory, a series that covers essential mathematical concepts that you will definitely run into during your game development career. Today, we will be looking at vectors. Before we get into how a vector is defined, let's have a look at why they're useful. Vectors are often used when we want to move a character around the scene. Let's say that we want to move our character two units to the right and one unit up. What we essentially do is create a vector, which we represent with an arrow, that points in that direction. We can then add this vector onto the position of our character to make him move. If we were to write down this vector mathematically, we would write 2, 1, because the vector moves 2 on the x and 1 on the y. We say that a vector is defined by a direction and a length. In our case, the direction of the vector is where we want our character to point, and the length of the vector is how far our character should walk in that direction. If we wanted our character to then move one unit to the left, we would make a new vector with the coordinates minus 1, 0, because the vector goes minus 1 on the x and 0 on the y. However, you will quickly notice that the coordinates only show what the vector looks like, and not where we should place it in the scene. That is because vectors don't have any inherent position. Position. That allows us to draw it anywhere we want. It is only when we combine it with the position of our character that the vector adds anything meaningful to our example. Now let's look at another example where vectors come in handy. Say we have a scene with two players, player A and player B, and we want to find the distance between the two. Well, both players have a position, which means where they are in relationship to the center of our level. In this example, player A has a position of 2, 1, because he's two units from the center on the x and one unit from the center on the y. Likewise, player B has a position of 1, 4, because he's one unit from the center on the x and four units from the center on the y. We can now create a vector that points from player A to player B. To do this, we subtract the position of player A from the position of player B. This is done in the easiest way possible by first subtracting the x components, 1 minus 2 equals minus 1. Then we subtract the y components, 4 minus 1 equals 3. And the result is a vector with the coordinates minus 1, 3. Let's try to draw this in our scene. We can see that the vector correctly goes from player A to player B, but how do we calculate the length of this vector? That is, in fact, really easy. The length of a vector can be written as the square root of x squared plus y squared. Note that the length of a vector is referred to as the vector's magnitude. If you wonder why the length of a vector is defined using this particular formula, you can try to think of the vector as the hypotenuse of the triangle created by the vector coordinates, and then use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the length of that side. But you could of course just use the formula as is. So if we want to calculate the distance between our players, we simply insert the x and y coordinates of the vector into the formula and voila! The distance from player A to player B is 3.16 units. The same thing is extremely easy to do in three dimensions as well. All the vectors now simply have a third component, the z-axis, which is also added into the formula. At this point you might be thinking, why do I need to know all of this? My game engine has an easy function for getting the distance between two points in space. Well, an example of why this knowledge might be useful to you is the fact that it has just allowed us to make a very important optimization in our code. Say that we are making a racing game and we have two players, A and B, who are competing to reach the goal. And in our game, we want to display who is currently ahead. In that case, we might subtract the position of each player from the position of the goal to get two vectors from our players to the goal. We could then get the length of each vector using the formula from before and compare them to find out which car is closest. However, using the square root operator can be pretty taxing on the computer and doing this calculation a lot of times during a game might lead to performance issues. So instead we could simply remove the square root and only compare the remaining x squared plus y squared. This doesn't give us the actual length of the two vectors, but it still shows what vector is greater than the other, which makes it perfect for doing a comparison between the two. So that is pretty much all I have to show for this video. If you're interested in learning more about vectors, there's a link for that in the description. I hope you enjoyed the first part of Game Math Theory. Next I hope to cover the magic of sine waves. If you want to support the series, you can do so on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in August, and a special thanks to Aaron Meta, Robert Roche, Calhoun, Vixian P, and Andrew K. 